So today we're going to be installing JDownloader on our server, which promises to make downloading as easy and as fast as possible. So welcome to Technodad Life, and my name is Jeff, and here we make technology simplified. And so today we're going to be looking at JDownloader. We're going to be installing that in a Docker container, and then we're going to just briefly touch on plugins for it. So let's get started. So the first thing I want you to notice is please go to the beta.jdownloader.org page. Uh, if you go to the regular one, you can't log into my Jade Downloader, which you need to do for this to work. So definitely go to the beta.jdownloader. Next, if we look at Wikipedia, so basically how Jade Downloader works is it has about 300 plugins that you can add in. And it also, where it got popular, is its hoster plugins, where if you download from a particular site, then you can get a plugin and then that will automatically do that for you. It also does some interesting things so it can solve CAPTCHAs on its own, it can wait and it can extract, and it has themes. Now to do this tutorial you need a few things. So first you need to download PuTTY or whatever you use as a SSH client. Next you need a text editor and I switched to Adam io because it's free and it's open source and you can find that at adam.io next you want to click on my j downloader and then create an account if you don't already have one and so we'll need this account information to put in the docker so then my j downloader will automatically log into the servers next we're going to uh, look at this particular docker container so the j mullen j downloader and so why we're using this particular one is it is multi-arch and multi-arch means it will uh, be used, you can use it on lots of different chipsets. So this does have an ARM uh, version and also x86, which are the two favorite platforms for people who watch my channel. And so again, it's the J Mullen J Downloader. Don't get that confused with the J Lessage Downloader 2 because that one does not work on the Raspberry Pi. Again, this is the only image that works on both platforms. So if we scroll down, we have our Docker Compose file. And so what we need to do is just copy that and then paste that into Atom. And so here we need to adjust a few things. We need to add a version. So here I put version quote 2.1 quotes. If we scroll down, we need to change our user ID, our PID and GID. So how we find that is we open up PuTTY and we need to type in our server IP address. And so basically that's when our server is open. It's here in the taskbar. Copy that. Paste that in as our host name. Take out all the little things that aren't numbers and dots and then click open and then we're going to log in as root and put in your password next we're going to type in id and then our user and so for me my user is jeff hit enter and here you can see my uid is 1000 my gid is 100. now if we scroll down on the configuration page we can see here it says UID and then GID. So here my UID is 1000, my GID is 100. So that's all set. Next is we have two different folders we need. So we need a configuration folder and then we need access to the downloads folder. So how we find those is we go back to Open Media Vault, click on Shared Folders. Click next to relative path, there's a down arrow, click columns, and then click absolute path. And then that creates an absolute path. And then we're going to right click on the one for app data, inspect, double click, and then copy. And then paste that here, and then add J downloader. 
Next, we need the download folder. Same idea, highlights, right click, inspect, double click on the file path, click copy, and then paste that here and then add jdownloader. So we can leave our local time as local time. Next, we need to add in our email address from when we signed into jdownloader, then our password from jdownloader. And then finally, we need to give our device a name and you can name it whatever you want. Once you've fixed all those, copy that, open up Portainer, go to Stacks, Add Stack, and we're going to call this jdownloader. And then we're going to paste in our stack, look to make sure everything's OK, and then scroll down and click Deploy Stack. And then it's time for a cup of coffee. Once that's done, you'll see J Downloader stack here. If we go Next, if we go to containers, we see J Downloader, and we're going to click on the piece of paper for the logs. You can see it's checking for updates. So once it goes to that point, then you can go back to my J Downloader, the login site, and log in. So go back here to myjdownloader.org, uh, sign in with your uh, email and password. And then up comes my server immediately. If it doesn't, uh, click refresh. Or uh, you can go back to Portainer. And if you didn't get this updates message, that means there's probably permissions problems on your uh, folders. And this is how you would fix that. So go to Open Media Vault, go to your shared folders, click on Reset Permissions, and then uh, App data uh, first reset permissions because my server is not exposed to the internet. Uh, I have everyone read write, but you can do whatever you want. But it does work this way. Then click reset permissions and do, then do the same things for the download folder. Uh, then what you actually have to do is actually go back to Portainer, delete the J Downloader stack, and then reinstall it. So if we go back to myjdownloader.org, here is our server. We click on that. That brings up the web interface. And so for here we can so here we can add in links from the different websites that we visit to download the information from those websites. One other thing to make that easier is you can actually add the myjdownloader browser extension. It's on Chrome. And then you just stick it again, stick in your information for J Downloader, just like we do when we sign into the website. And then you can automatically add any links to your J Downloader that way. So that's it for today. I hope you found this helpful. J Downloader is a very simple, easy downloader for very specific websites, but it does have lots of extensions. We'll see you next time. Make sure you like and subscribe, and bye bye. And a special thank you to all my patrons who, without your support, this channel would not be possible. And if you haven't already, please think about supporting the channel you love. Thank you.